Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of Minty Minutes, a podcast thing that I created a couple months ago to basically just have me sit here and talk about some things that I've been watching, things that I've been doing uh, since the last episode, that I don't really want to make into full videos because either the uh, watching of it came way later than intended, or just they wouldn't necessarily make good videos that I can get out in a reasonable time, but stuff that I still just want to talk about and just kind of highlight a bit from, you know, stuff I've been watching that isn't in the form of videos. Uh, kind of like review stuff, kind of just you know off the cuff thoughts about things but either way as you can see in the background there you can see the rundown of this episode we got the doctor who specials uh all three of the 60th, 60th anniversary specials to talk about and then the christmas special as well i finally got to see the barbie movie now that's on hbo max and uh it was really good it's real good talk about that a little bit uh i saw godzilla minus one <laughs> last night literally at the the year's end of 2023 i ended off the year by finally watching godzilla minus one because it is still in theaters and uh whew, do i have a lot of things to say about that movie i don't even know how coherent i can say them but man what a what a phenomenal movie um uh, the marvel what if season two just ended uh yesterday i think day before that um only nine episodes of that and what an improvement from season one definitely want to talk about that a little bit and then also something i actually watched at the end of november that i never actually talked about or anything but uh scott pilgrim takes off the animated series from netflix about scott pilgrim definitely want to mention that a little bit so yeah just welcome to this episode of minty minutes and let's just get right into it shall we all right, so starting off with the 60th anniversary Doctor Who specials, all three of them, and then the Christmas special as well. The three specials we had were the Star Beast, Wild Blue Yonder, and The Giggle. All three of them, I gotta say, pretty decently good. <laughs> they were pretty decently good, and it was just cool seeing Doctor Who again. Um, not that I haven't really been watching Doctor Who, I've been watching, re-watching the New Who era stuff and uh, reactions, and then my big review video that I did for, um, for Tenet's first season. Um, but it was just cool actually seeing Doctor Who again, since I hadn't really been watching Watching it since Jody's season uh, just because the writing had been so weird and bad but hey we got Russell D Davies back and that is an interesting thing because at least he can he at least he can show run a show you know but it was really cool seeing David Tennant back as the 14th Doctor not really sure if I necessarily liked him as the 14th Doctor I thought it was a bit you know businessy to have him back instead of having someone else be the 14th but also I can kind of understand it as well also the specials felt the specials were interesting because they weren't really like a celebration per se of the 60 years of Doctor Who, but were more setting up for um, for Shudigatwa's uh, season for 15th Doctor, which I don't mind. It was just kind of interesting. And uh, that's not saying the specials weren't good. They were definitely good. I really enjoyed watching them. It's just as the 60th anniversary specials compared to like the 50th anniversary, which was a massive like celebration of the 50 years of Doctor Who. This one just didn't really feel like a celebration, but more just like, hey, 60 years of Doctor Who. That's pretty cool. Um, again, not a bad thing at all. Not a bad thing at all. Um, but yeah, but yeah, seeing David Tennant back as the 14th was pretty cool. Seeing Catherine Tate back as Donna was just awesome. Um, Donna's one of my favorite companions of New Who, just in general. I'm very excited to actually rewatch her season with Tennant just to, uh, to see that again. But, uh, I remember I really love Donna as a companion, and I love her even more now. Um, now that I'm older and can understand the sass a little bit more, <laughs> it's, uh, it's really good. But, um, I really like these specials. I, I thought they were good. They were just a nice return to form for Doctor Who. Uh, at least I felt like they were a nice return to form. A little a little action-y, I will say, uh, especially in the first one, Star Beast. A little action-y, but you can kind of tell they actually had a budget now, now that they get, now they're they getting that, uh, that Disney money for being on Disney+. Plus. Um, you can tell they have a budget. <laughs> you can definitely tell they have a budget now, just based on how the new TARDIS looks, how action-oriented uh, the first episode was at times, how big the second episode was, even though it was only, literally only like two people in the cast, um, but how just big and green screened it was and then of course just how other otherworldly massive uh, the giggle was but um but yeah it's cool actually seeing doctor who have a budget and uh, actually have them on disney plus i don't know necessarily if i like the fact that doctor who is kind of co-produced or whatever by disney at this point but also i don't think i mind it either it's one of those weird things where it's just disney in general um that i'm not sure about as a company at the moment but uh it is it is i think a good idea to have doctor who on disney plus to reach a wide audience and i thought these specials were a good way of introducing a wide audience to the idea of doctor who um if they haven't seen the series before i thought all three of the episodes were pretty good approximations of what you can kind of expect from doctor who 
uh, except maybe the giggle. The giggle was the giggle was a very interesting one, where it was it was definitely a Doctor Who villain episode, which I I really liked personally. But the thing that I really like about specials in general were just the things we got introduced to that we will probably hopefully see more of in Shooty season, um, or at least some stuff spinning off from them. Uh, I love the introduction of Donna's uh, daughter uh, Rose Noble. I thought she was great. I cannot wait to see her more. Um, also seeing the new unit and seeing unit tower um, and seeing uh, Kate Lethbridge Stewart uh, come back um, and heading up unit to seeing that whole character again um, getting getting a classic companion as well getting Mel back and having her in unit and having her also not be a companion is like that's like oh no I hated uh, not being with the doctor but being like yeah no I, I moved on with my life I'm doing stuff now and it's just nice it's nice to see a former companions actually having a life outside the doctor it's, it is really cool um that is just very very cool uh the villain of the meep i thought was a really fun interesting introduction of a character especially since it was based on an actual comic book story uh back when marvel was producing the doctor who comic books that was really really cool to see that i'm very excited to see where that entire storyline goes with what they were talking about in the star beast episode um and then just seeing the toy maker uh having <laughs> Having Neil Patrick Harris come in as the toy maker, uh, the celestial toy maker, a villain from like one episode of the first season of Doctor Who, or like the first Doctor Who, uh, the first Doctor, um, not just from the first season, but from the first Doctor, seeing this character come back and then just be like this maniacal, chaotic villain was so, so awesome. Um, and just seeing how powerful of a character they are, but also how firmly strict they are to the rules of the game. Um, but also everything they said when in, uh, when in the Tormaker's universe about the, the various people that uh, he beat in various games um, that are probably going to be coming at some point in Shooty's, uh, Shooty's run or later um was so so cool <laughs> just so amazing because like you can you can build off so many stories from the things that they mentioned and uh, i'm very excited to see where those stories even go but just as a, as an actual look and as a character the toy maker was so cool to introduce and i'm really excited to see if davies is actually going to be introducing more characters or i should say reintroducing more of these classic uh who villain characters to canon and to the new Who audience, because I'm really here to see it. Uh, I've been joking for the longest time um, about them reintroducing the Mad Monk. I don't even care about the Mad Monk. I just think this character is such an interesting one-off villain that I would love to see them reintroduced again, just because, you know, just just because. And of course, the the Mephisto of Doctor Who at this point, the Ronnie, uh, actually reintroducing the Ronnie, I think would be very, very cool to do. And just among other random uh, early Early, early classic who wants to come back I think would be very very cool so I'm really excited to see where they're going from the 60th anniversary specials and then into the Christmas special um, the church on Ruby Road which I thought was just a delight I thought that episode was just such an absolute delight it felt really cool having an actual Doctor Who Christmas special because we haven't had one in a while that actually was a Christmas special that came on on Christmas Day um, it felt like a good return to tradition uh, a little bit there um, really got a good feel for for Shudigawa and what he's going to introduce and bring to the character of the Doctor for the 15th Doctor. I, I'm really liking Shudi as a Doctor so far, and I'm very interested and very on board to see him grow into this character. And like I mentioned in my Doctor Who video about Tenet, it felt like the writers hadn't necessarily figured out Tenet when he was when, when he was first doing it. I feel like the writers and Davies at this point, and Shudi as well, just nailed the feel of this Doctor. And I feel like the 15th Doctor, because of everything that happened in the specials, just kind of feels like he's he's free. He's just kind of like a free spirit. It's like a more free Doctor that's like the stress and the weight of, of his adventures is finally off of him. And he can just kind of go and just explore and just be an explorer and be an adventurer again like the Doctor was always supposed to be. So I'm really here for that. Also, Millie Gibson as Ruby Sunday. I thought she was just a, a joy. 
Um, you, you didn't really get much of a feel for her in the episode, surprisingly, uh, since it is centered around her, but she does offer a lot of story potential, a lot of questions that I really hope are answered or at least discussed in the season, which I believe they will be. But at least Millie Gibson in general, I thought she was a joy as his character, and I like the energy she brings as well, because it, it, it's, it's matching Shooty's uh, energy as the Doctor, and I'm really, really liking it so far. Just really liking it, I cannot wait to see more of her. Also, her fashion choice in that first episode great love the plaid skirt love the jacket very awesome but beyond all that the big thing coming from the christmas special was the introduction the introduction of goblins and they weren't like aliens they were just actual goblins which davies has already said in interviews or whatever or like uh, production things that they're just going to be doing more supernatural stuff in doctor who because of the introduction of the toy maker and the stuff that um tenet uh, the 14th doctor did in the wobbly yonder of just basically introducing superstition into the galaxy into the universe i'm 100 percent here for that i am 100 percent here for the doctor just dealing with like actual magic or actual supernatural stuff i am here for it and it, it is awesome it's just really cool because there's a lot of fun story stuff you can do with that so introducing introducing the goblins the goblins design were okay <laughs> they were goblins so you know whatever uh also their song was something <laughs> that's all i'll say there it was something um interesting that but then there's just a lot of questions that are then posed from this christmas special like who left ruby at the church who is mrs flood stuff that I think we'll see in this season, if not this season, then while Davies is show running the show, I hope we see, and again, I hope there is some form of resolution for them that uh, will be gratifying. And I have a couple theories already at who some of these characters can be. I won't say them here because it'll just take way too much time, but I do have a couple of theories that I'm excited to see if they come true or not. And uh, I'm just, I'm here for this. I'm here for new Doctor Who. Um, I'm, I'm definitely gonna be watching these special, or watching this, this upcoming season. I don't know if I'll do like reviews for them or reactions or anything but i'm definitely going to be watching them for sure uh, along with my rewatch of uh, of classic new who i guess is the best way to put it now so i'm i'm here for it i'm really here for all the doctor who stuff coming up um in the future in this coming year i am very excited for everything and uh it's cool to be a doctor who fan it's just cool to be a doctor who fan right now i'm really hyped for it really really hype and that's basically all i can say about doctor who it's just uh, it's an exciting time, and I'm really here for it, and I really cannot wait to see more of Shudigawa's season and his 15th Doctor, and uh, to see if they also explain some stuff from the specials as well, with how they ended the 60th anniversary special with uh, By Generation. <laughs> I am intrigued to see where they go with that, and what they do with that, and I hope they don't take it too businessy, and I hope they actually make it a creative thing instead. But either way, it's an exciting time to be Dr. Yuvan, and I am here for all of it. So next up, I'm finally going to talk about Barbie, uh, something that I wanted to talk about back in July when it came out, but uh, unfortunately the strikes were going on, but unfortunately but fortunately at the same time the strikes were going on, and I really want to do the whole Barbenheimer thing, have not seen Oppenheimer yet. Um, Oppenheimer is one of those types of movies where it's just in general, I just not as excited to watch it just because it's a three hour long i think three hour long like christopher nolan drama and like i don't know if i have the mental capacity to sit through that but you know i will at some point i will do it but i finally get to see barbie uh now it's on hbo max and man what a movie what an absolute film um, it was in my top three of the year after seeing it. My top three was wild as well. Actually, my top ten was wild for, for movies I watched, but Barbie was great. Um, I love Greta Gerwig as a director, also as an actress as well as a writer, but I really love Greta Gerwig as a, as a director. I think, I think she has a very good eye for uh for film and a very good eye for the camera as well and i thought that was definitely portrayed in barbie um the whole production of of barbie land was wild <laughs> just absolutely wild and i i love how love how dedicated i think the best way to put it all the actors were to their parts especially all the toys um like ryan gosling margot robbie obviously are standouts for sure but then just like all of the other Barbies that they had, all the other Kens they had were so over the top in the best way possible that it felt good. 
And to go back to Greta Gerwig, which I kind of got a little off topic there with her, but to go back to her, I love how tightly this movie was to being a kid's movie. While it's still feeling like a Greta Gerwig, like really poignant, really um, thought provoking uh, uh, film, but it was a kid's movie. <laughs> like it was at the end of the day, it was a kid's movie that didn't skimp on the humor. The humor was there. It was also good. Like it wasn't, it wasn't lowbrow kids humor. Like there was actually just some really good humor in it. Uh, Ryan Gosling himself had some phenomenal, <laughs> some phenomenal parts uh, as Ken just, just eating up the uh, the scenes he was in was were just hilarious. Uh, and Margot Robbie is just the best. Like I have had a, I've had an actor, an actress crush on Margot Robbie since she came into the industry. Obviously, since she was cast as Harley Quinn, to be completely honest. Um, but I've had like a, a a fan crush on Margot Robbie forever, and I love all of the work she's ever been in. It's it, she's just always so good. She is just so good and so dedicated to her craft that it is just impressive and inspiring. And her as Barbie was just so good. <laughs> it's like she is Barbie. I love how they make a joke about it too in the movie about how like if you i think it was like if you if you wanted to like have barbie more of an ideal and less about physical appearance and don't cast margaret robbie as barbie and they say this in the movie which is great which is why like again the, the humor of this movie is so good because it's meta humor done right um but honestly the big part about the whole movie though was how thought-provoking and impactful the message was and how <laughs> i know i know a lot of people purposely missed the message of this film just to uh, uh send, like further their narratives or whatever about the movie um but i the message of the movie was so good and it was just simply about equality and just about just accepting people for who they are <laughs> and just being your own person and that was so good i i love that whole thing and how like to not try to live up these like capitalistic standards that are set by these like massive corporations but just be you just be an individual be yourself and it was great, and I loved I loved the ending of the movie too, of how we, we get that, and also ends off with a pretty great joke as well, but I won't spoil the joke if you haven't seen it yet, but I mean, the movie came out in July, so at this point, if you haven't seen the movie, then, you know, spoil away. But I thought, I thought the movie was great, I thought it was really colorful, really bright, um, every every everything about it just felt it just felt good and felt well made. And I love how, like, I was talking to one of my friends during the movie just like messaging them uh, while I was watching the movie and we were just like chatting <laughs> about how good the movie was and it was great um the Barbie's great Barbie was so good I can see why it was the highest grossing film of the entire year worldwide which also phenomenal feat there the fact that it was the highest grossing Warner Bros movie the highest grossing movie in general of the year and that somehow Mattel uh completely got the wrong idea from it <laughs> <laughs> which you know that's just that's just capitalistic corporations for you getting the complete wrong idea from this movie it's like no the movie was not about barbie it was about the idea and everything mattel don't you don't need to make a movie about Polly pocket now master of the universe i will take a master of the universe he-man movie because that universe is ripe for picking and that movie that 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 whole franchise are great so like master of the universe you can do that but yeah the only like downside of the movie there was there I, there are some critiques the only like downside i would say for the movie was just everything with Will Ferrell and, and Mattel in the movie. I thought it was like, okay, this is this is goofy. This is just some goofy kids movie stuff. Like, I understand why it's there. I understand the purpose of it being there. Um, I understand it for the whole plot progression of the movie and for the, the thematic and the story part of it. I understand all of that. It was just, it was just goofy. <laughs> Just goofy for goofy's sake, and Will Ferrell yet again just playing one of these like over the top CEO type characters, like he did in Lego Movie. It was like, okay, I get it, I understand. It this one's more for the kids, but it was still good. So, end of the day, Barbie for me was still a ten out of ten, um, which I don't give those lightly. I've only given, uh, I gave three of them this year. I gave three of them this year. I'm getting ready to get to another one and the the top one, I should say, uh, the next section. But Barbie was great. If you haven't seen it yet, go go watch it on HBO Max or wherever you want to watch it, rent it or whatever. Um, just go watch it. It's a good time. It is a very good time. Um, it's a good family film. There's a lot of good messaging from it, but it's still a good a good family film. In 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 general, it can have a lot of good discussions to come from it as well. Um, a lot of good constructive discussions to come from it i should say um but yeah barbie was just so good i'm glad i finally got the chance to watch it and i'm uh, i wish i'd watched it earlier but i'm glad i finally got to watch it now
So from one 10 out of 10 movie to an absolute other one, um, my actual film of the year, um, I, I finally got to see Godzilla Minus One. Um, I had honestly been waiting to do this entire Minty Minutes until I saw Godzilla Minus One because I wanted to talk about this thing so badly, but scheduling and family things and holidays just kept getting, kept getting, like ruining the plans so, like go see this film. And the fact that it was still in theaters, this movie came out like a month and a half ago. The fact that this thing was still in theaters, that it got an extended, extended run, and is honestly, at this point, by the time this video goes up, I think it's still in theaters, actually. At least with a couple showings in my local area. Um, Godzilla Minus One is phenomenal. <laughs> this movie is an absolute masterpiece. And I, I do not say that lightly, because like... Usually, usually, like, every piece of art has some form of critique for it, and that is not a downside of art. That is an actual positive for art to always improve. I don't think there was a downside at all to this movie. Like, this film was an absolute masterpiece from start to finish about everything. And I, I can definitely see where everyone had been talking about this movie, Godzilla fans and non-Godzilla fans alike, about how phenomenal this film is. And it is phenomenal, <laughs> just absolutely phenomenal. Um, the the whole film just has so many themes and messages and metaphors and emotional gut punches, while still being kind of a fun, quote unquote, action movie at times. But like, it was just so so well made, and like, I'm running out of words even to talk about it. But um, I think one of the coolest things about it was I kept thinking about it. And I went to go see it with my dad literally on New Year's Eve when I saw it with my dad. And we just talked about the movie the whole time on the way home. Like the whole drive home, we were just talking about it and, and how good the film was and how many like themes and messages were in it. And the fact that we kept thinking of more and more that just kept popping up as we were driving, as we were talking. I was like, wow, this is so good. Um, and the other cool thing about it was like, our theater was like fairly busy for New Year's Eve for Godzilla minus one. It was it was fairly busy. Like I would say probably about half full for for one of the smaller theaters that we have at our at our local cinema, and it, it it was it was about half full. And the thing about it is that the whole film is subtitled. It is all in Japanese, other than like a tiny thirty second part from like a military thing or whatever in the movie uh which again thematically is, is appropriate in the movie for what it's talking about um but the whole movie's in japanese uh with subtitles and the fact that this entire audience didn't mind and <laughs> that they were all engrossed and they were all watching the film and just reading the subtitles along and just being part of this film felt great it felt so great especially with how much discourse i feel like there is about like foreign films and how like hardly anyone ever actually goes and sees foreign films because of subtitles it, clearly this theater didn't care <laughs> clearly the subtitles did not matter in fact like you know i watch subtitles on a lot of things anyway I'll, i watch subtitles on english things just because i want to i want to see what characters are actually saying because sometimes audio is just really bad um looking at you chris Renolan, your audio in your films is terrible but but beyond all that like this movie was just phenomenal and it was so engrossing and emotional and like by the end of the movie i was i was tearing up by by what i was seeing and and as an, as a godzilla fan as as an actual like avid godzilla fan it was everything I had wanted. It was so, so much. It was a, it was a classic throwback to Gojira, the 1954 Gojira film, where Godzilla himself was a metaphor. It was a, it was a great metaphor for a nuclear war, for the destructive power of humans and of nature, and, and it was, it was a great message there. But even more so, I love how the film was, was kind of anti-government and about how, how poor the government is at responding to to events like this or how they throw away their people uh, all the time but um I, so i loved that a lot and and but more so i didn't not, not necessarily like the whole anti-government thing but how the movie is about citizens and about communities and about just normal people banding together to defend themselves and to to raise up to have their future to uh, to make sure that there is a future for the future generations and to go against their culture to go against the 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 toxic traits of their culture that they grew up with to ensure that there is a better future for everyone that that's so human it's just such a human story and it was great like i 
I thoroughly loved everything about this film, and uh, what I love even more is the fact that we have both Godzilla Minus One and we have Monarch Legacy of Monsters going on at the same time. And uh, this year, in a couple months, we're going to have the next Godzilla and Kong movie from Legendary. And all of those things can exist at the same time and it not take away from any of the other ones. And I love that so much. Uh, go see Godzilla Minus One if it is still in theaters near you. If not, then find a way to watch this movie when it comes out on DVD or Blu-ray or streaming or whatever. Just watch Godzilla Minus One. It is an absolute masterpiece of a film that is 100% going to be studied in like film classes at some point. Um, it is It is so deep and it is so densely packed with just film with just filmmaking mastery and it is it, it was easily my number one movie of the year and it, like not even close <laughs> like not even close and i'm glad i actually waited until literally the end of the year to finally be able to watch it um if that was just like some like faded thing or whatever but it was it was great it was phenomenal so the final couple of things here for this Minty Minutes is uh, just kind of fitting the theme here of what these Minty Minutes are, just me just geeking out and like nerding out and just uh, hyping out about things I just loved. And that, that's honestly just what I want Minty Minutes to be in general, just like a, like a little chill podcast type thing, just me just sending out positivity <laughs> for things that I really like and just like highlighting the positivity of the things that I like as well to bring some more positivity to the internet and to the world at large and these last two things are going to be animated and stuff that I I really loved I just loved and uh, the first thing is the Marvel What If series um season one of, of What If came out what two years ago at this point last year something like that I think it was two years ago um that's weird it came out two years ago but yeah first season one of Marvel What If came out like two years ago for uh for phase four it was one of the it was one of the weird like middle child things uh from disney plus where they didn't really market it that much they they put out the episodes like weekly and it, it was okay <laughs> it was simply okay um i thought season one was fine i wish they had done more actual what if stories and didn't stick so closely to the mcu plot lines for a lot of these and it was fine introducing these what if characters or introducing these multiverse characters i thought was good and introducing the idea of the multiverse to the mcu has been a double-edged sword for sure but i thought what if it a good job of, it, of like explaining it better than the actual mainline mcu did which is funny to say that but also bringing back actual mcu actors to play these multiverse characters was phenomenal especially seeing some of the uh, characters some of the actors who you know their characters died off really early in the mcu or only got like one chance to do their stuff so seeing them come back and be able to voice these characters again and being able to do actual stuff with these characters is so good but yeah so season one was okay i thought it ended fine and to be honest i wasn't necessarily excited for season two when it was announced or when when the first trailer came out but you know i was i was going to go into it. i was like you know what fine i'll watch it's going to come out over the course of the nine days uh from christmas until the end of the year you know it's going to be a fun like week holiday thing so like you know why not why not let's watch it and wow <laughs> it was so interesting and so surprising how good what if season two was and how much of an improvement the whole idea of of the mcu what if was to season one and how like watching each individual episode and talking about it with a few people in and various discords i'm part of and just kind of like sharing our our mutual excitement our mutual love for this series and actually seeing these what if episodes be actual what if episodes and be completely unique stories for the mcu and seeing a bunch of characters that either don't ever get any time in the mcu to do stuff or are expanded upon here or just like seeing them in unique takes and again having mcu actors come back to voice these characters that they didn't really get a chance to show off that much of in their actual movies is spectacular the the main one i can think of is i think it was episode seven um i think it was episode seven we get we get kate blanchett back as hella and a, and a whole episode about her but it's mixing like her story as if it were thor one but with shang chi and we're getting the characters from shang chi back and it's like that's awesome that's so awesome and i'm so glad they did it um but also the fact that this series 
uh, reestablish Captain Carter and Peggy Carter as a main as a main mainline character, and I love Haley Atwell, and the fact that she is full bore, full into this as Peggy Carter is phenomenal. I love it, and I love the character of Captain Carter so so much. I at first season one I was a bit iffy about her being called Captain Carter and not just being called Captain America, um, but. I'm I'm 100% here for it now because I kind of see what they're doing with her with her as a character where they're kind of kind of making her Captain Britain the Guardian of the Multiverse which is a thing in the comics I can kind of see what they're doing there and that's a really cool thing doing it very subtly but I, I loved it and then also the other big thing that is the the massive thing from this season um there are two there are a couple massive things but this is the first one is episode six for the first time in like 15 years uh they introduced a completely original character an actual completely original uh powered character that is original to the mcu and her name is Cahorti, and she is a mohawk uh native american girl that basically has the power of an Infinity Stone in her. Uh, so do a lot of her people um, because of the events of what happened in that What If episode. So we get a brand new, it's a completely brand new original character introduced in this show. And it it pains me to know or to just have the feeling that they're introduced in this animated series and then we'll probably never actually get to see them in live action or in anything else. Now, Secret Wars is going to be a thing, and that is the big multiverse culmination of Enders thing. But with everything else going on in the MCU right now, who knows what's going to happen with that, though? So, don't know. I don't know. But it, but Kehorti was so, so cool as a character, and I'm so glad they introduced her, because she is just such a, such a neat thing to finally introduce in the MCU of just an actual brand new character um and her episode was phenomenal too of having basically the whole thing uh, voiced in actual like mohawk in the mohawk language except for like the little parts about spanish where the uh the conquistadors came like that was so good and just having the introduction of this character was so good and then the other big thing that is massive to me and i feel like it's massive to a lot of people too but i feel like it's definitely massive to me was how the end of the season introduced the idea of the watcher and peggy being nexus beings and how they actually showed us idrasil they showed us the world tree that loki made at the end of loki season two we finally got an actual crossover with a live action series and we got two of the disney plus series actually acknowledging each other and those two being a live action one and an animated one that blew my mind it blew my mind because like up to this point the mcu series on disney plus had felt so distant from one another and from the MCU as a whole because they kind of just have been. So to actually see two of them connect finally is is great. It's so great. It's like it felt like for me seeing Tony Stark pop up in the Incredible Hulk movie where it's like, oh my god, they're doing it. They're actually doing a thing more more so than Nick Fury popping up in Iron Man. But like, oh my god, they're actually connecting finally. It felt that that, that way to me. Um, it felt like also back in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. where they actually had Nick Fury pop up in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Like, that's cool. That's really cool. And then Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. did his Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. thing and they just forgot about it, which sucks. So that show was pretty good. <laughs> that was a pretty good show. I need to go back and rewatch it. But yeah, Marvel What If Season 2, it surprised me more than anything. And it was a worthy watch for the MCU. And honestly, one of the most intriguing and um, creative things that has happened in the entirety of the mcu this year because this year for i mean marvel but also disney as a whole but just for marvel's sake for this this discussion um for this part of the episode like marvel this year has been a roller coaster an absolute roller coaster where like there were some great ups there were some absolute atrocious downs there were some very middle stuff <laughs> happening it was it was a weird year it was a weird year and next year is going to be a dead year basically because they have nothing coming out other than echo and uh, deadpool 3 which who knows what those things are going to do for the entirety of the mcu and with the amount of reshoots and rewrites they're having to go through with all of the the jonathan major stuff happening which actually now has a definitive end to it um we won't talk about it here but hey there's at least an end to that whole 
Kang saga, <laughs> the best way to put it. Um, it's it's going to be weird. It's going to be real weird to see what they're going to be doing. Uh, the fact that they have basically nothing coming out next year, and I think it's a good thing. I think it's honestly a really good thing they have nothing coming out, because uh, it's a good reset button. But hey, if they want to do uh, What If Season 3 next year, cool. That's probably a good thing to do. <laughs> That'll probably be a really good thing to do. Maybe the Marvel Zombie series, if uh, we actually do get that. Um, I don't know where they're putting it. I don't know how far into production that thing is, but like maybe that. But yeah, Marvel What If Season 2 was so, so good. And again, gen genuinely surprised me with how creative and unique it was, especially for Marvel this year. It was, it was a really good time, and I highly recommend watching it, especially since it's only nine, up, nine episodes, with episodes being around a half hour each, maybe. So it's like you can you can literally watch it in an afternoon and it'd be done, and it is well well worth it just for some of those stories. Um, I mean, the 1602 story they did, where they're basically adapting the actual 1602 comic book, is phenomenal um and just something i never knew i needed until i started watching it but yeah what if season two great time very fun probably one of the best things marvel did this whole year which is kind of surprising but hey it's a lot better than secret invasion but that is uh it's not a high bar to to necessarily have to hit um and it uh it definitely surpassed that to say the least it definitely surpassed that and then the final thing for this Minty Minutes is uh, talking about Scott Pilgrim Takes Off. And I know the series came out in like November, and it actually took me a couple of weeks to actually watch it, which is uh, ironic and funny to say because Scott Pilgrim is actually my favorite, one of my favorite franchises of all time. Um, the, uh, the actual movie is legitimately one of my favorite movies of all time that I go back to and just watch on a fairly regular basis just to... Just to have a good time and like you know get myself like into a good mental state um i've read the comic so many times i need to go back and reread it uh i've played the game so many times i actually beat it uh on on stream when i was streaming before uh that was fun I actually got the limited run games uh physical edition of the game so like i know i have the game uh i love scott pilgrim as as a franchise as a story as an idea whatever whatever the hell you want to call it the cast of that first movie of the original movie was mind-blowing thinking about it now and just how lucky <laughs> just how straight up lucky that entire cast was to come together right before like all of them took off <laughs> in in their own unique ways it is wild looking at that cast now and the fact that they're all still friends at this point thanks to michael sarah reviving the email chain they all had by sending a couple of memes in there like that was funny um that was just funny but the scott Pilgrim takes off the animated series um they brought back the entire original cast that was great um it's an animated series that i thought going into it was just going to be a retelling of the story uh, some form of retelling of the comic book of uh, the the movie you know making it more accurate to the comic whatever i thought it was gonna be that because that's usually what you would expect that is, that is i feel like what most people would expect from a series like that and they i'm so glad because in the marketing for it, they did not give it away what it was going to do um i did read an interview afterwards about it which i thought was very funny but um but then going into the show and like the first episode it completely by the end of it changes the entire story and it's like oh oh we're doing something completely new here aren't we <laughs> well i'm on board um and i actually think i watched the whole series the same night when i started watching it after i finally started watching it i usually either see uh all in the same night or over the course of two days um, but I watched the whole thing in basically a whole sitting, which I never do that. I I never binge watch anything, except for Doctor Who when I did that for the video recently. But just casually, I never binge watch things because I feel like it takes away. But with this, I was like, no, I need to just keep watching. I need to figure out what's going on here. Um, and it was so good. And bringing back the entire original cast, other than the, the Katanagi twins, um, the actors who played them in the movie, but also they never had a speaking role in the original movie so it was one of those weird things where like they they were part of the original movie but they never talked in it so it was a weird thing but bringing back the entire original cast except for them is also mind-blowing <laughs> given the fact that so so many of those actors and actresses are like mega superstars now and the fact that they came back <laughs> and were 
all on board to do this as almost a favor in a way because they were all such good friends they just wanted to do this again is great um and it just hits in the, in the nostalgic land of me it just really hits there um but then just having the series uh not even follow scott for the most part but follow ramona instead and having the whole story be a story of like accepting your your shitty past <laughs> accepting the fact that you were that people kind of are terrible people at times in their lives and just moving on and getting to see the evil exes not be evil which was great <laughs> to see them be people get more story from them uh actually figure out who they are as humans um getting to see scott's friends and seeing who they are as humans and getting some of their backstory getting some some interesting stuff from them it was all great and, in, and also just seeing ramona uh actually be a person and not just like a MacGuffin, um or not have her be just like this manic pixie dream girl but have her be an actual human being with emotions and wants and needs and growing and just growing as a person as a human being and apologizing to all of her exes for the being a shitty person and then having her exes apologize to her for them being shitty people um and then by the end of it having scott realize uh and apologize for everything too because he's also kind of a shitty person and just the whole show is just about growing up it's about growing up about being an adult about being a person and realizing your mistakes in life and then just moving from them and growing from them and i love that <laughs> i really do love that um and i also love the fact that uh the creators of the show um basically went into it with the idea that netflix was probably going to cancel them because that's just that's just how netflix rolls sadly <laughs> that is how netflix rolls so no matter no matter how successful the show was going to be if they thought it was going to be or not they're just like we're going to make this first season a complete story <laughs> uh but we're going to leave it open enough that if, if we if they green light us for a second season we can do it but if they don't and they netflix us we will have a complete story from season one and it's like that's cool i'm glad they did that just in case and then we don't have a situation like i'm not okay with this where they clearly clearly plan for more than one season and we got one <laughs> we got one really good season with a massive cliffhanger at the end so uh, i'm glad they didn't do that i'm glad they actually went into it with one story in mind they told that story they need the way they need to tell it and they left some stuff open for future seasons if they get them which not to not to try and guess what netflix will do because that is an impossible feat at this point to guess what any streaming service is going to do at any time uh look at hbo max sadly um look at warner Bros. in general but also look at netflix so not to not to try and guess what they would do but i i would be surprised <laughs> if they don't actually no i wouldn't is netflix i would be i'd be interested to see if they don't renew this for a season two if they don't green light a season two of this given how immensely popular i believe this season was and how immensely popular this ip is with all the star power in it and the the franchise in general like i i would be a little surprised if they don't do it but it is netflix so i also wouldn't <laughs> be surprised at all either because that's just how netflix rolls but yeah scott pilgrim takes off also i love the fact that in, in an interview or whatever uh something about that or something some type of thing like that uh the creators also <laughs> also said like yeah we actually hid the entire uh twist of the story in the title <laughs> in, the, in the title of the show it's like oh yeah they did didn't they that's just fun <laughs> that's just kind of funny um which is just cool that's, that's another like cool like little behind the scenes creator thing which i just love but yeah scott pilgrim takes off that was a that was a fun time a fun watch i actually kind of want to go back and rewatch it again like i want to watch the movie and then watch that afterwards just to see just to see how it flows from one another because the show is a sequel to somehow both the movie and the books depending on what you want it to be a sequel to based on how they do the show which is cool um and in fact it also is a legitimate sequel is also very cool too which i'm pretty sure I already mentioned in this whole thing as well but yeah scott pilgrim takes off go watch it while it's still on netflix and before they decide if they want to cancel it or not go ahead and watch it while it's there because it's a, it's a good time it's a real fun real good time and uh it was a good way to end off november <laughs> when i just finally when i finally decided to watch it it was a it's a good thing to watch either november or october i forgot exactly what month i watched it in but it was a it was a great way of ending off that month 
And that, folks, is another wrapping of Minty Minutes here, uh, this random kind of podcast talking thing that I have started doing that I uh, am going to try to do at least once a month uh, just to talk about stuff I want to talk about and talk about things I've watched and, like, again, like half review, half just nerd out about stuff and just get excited and happy about stuff because again i feel like the internet needs some more joy in it and some more genuine excitement and genuine happiness from things and genuine joy and that's just what this is that's what i hope my own my entire channel kind of is to uh to you all watching and listening out there but that's just basically what i want minty minutes to be minty minutes is just supposed to be a, a way for me to just sit down here talk to you all about some things i really liked and just show why I like the things and just hopefully get you all to like some things too and to at least check out some things and watch some things and that's about it really so I hope you enjoyed my my discussions and my talks about the things I talked about today and I can't wait for the next one um at some point I will probably have a guest on these things because I have a few friends that uh probably would want to do this and talk about some stuff but we'll see um not no promises or anything but yeah expect one of these at least every every month or so i would imagine probably once a month hopefully but don't want to burn myself out or anything but yeah i hope you all enjoy this one hope you all enjoy the things I talked about um if you've watched any of the things let me know down in the comments below what you think about any of them and uh yeah just let me know and if you like this uh podcasting rambling go ahead and subscribe as well you can hear more of my ramblings and reviews and reaction videos and some uh video essay like things that i have been doing and will be doing more of in the new year as as we go forward um and if you like it as well go ahead and leave a like it helps out as well and if you want to see, see some more from the channel uh on the screen will be some links to some playlists and some videos you can go watch those as well and until next time everyone just stay positive stay uh, excited about the things you want to be excited about and i will see you all in the next one and until then have a good day everyone happy new year and peace